Maybe Berlanga is elevating this guy and putting him on this pedestal, and he has, to he has to tell himself over and over and over again, my mantra is, he is human. He bleeds mm -hmm. just like me. Movie quote, because we always do movie quotes. Predator, if it <laughs> can bleed, we can kill, kill it. it yeah. Welcome everyone, it is time for Big Fight Breakdown here on Pro Box TV, your boxing channel. I am George DiMatellis. Now, Edgar Berlanga has a huge fight, maybe the biggest fight, well not maybe, it is the biggest fight of his career coming up against Canelo Alvarez. And he sat to talk to us here on Pro Box TV and he made it very clear that he cannot have one minute off, one second off when going up against Canelo Alvarez. Here's what he had to say to us here on Pro Box. I got to be great for 36 minutes. That's all that matters. For 36 minutes, I got to go in there and I got to be great. And I look at it like September 14th, I'm Edgar Belanga, but who I want to be September 15th is all on me. You get what I'm saying? Like, it's either September 14th, I'm going to wake up and I'm going to be a legend that I just beat a legend or a fighter that, that you know, that wasn't supposed to get this opportunity. He beat somebody or, or I wake up September 15th and it's like, damn, you know, like, fuck. I could have did this. I could have did that. Nah, man. Like, that night... Everything that I know I am, that I got, I'm talented, bro. Like, I've been boxing for 20 years, you know, and a guy like him is going to take the best out. He's going to bring the best out of me that night. You know what I'm saying? And one thing about me is I know for a fact when it's time to show up, I show up. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, for 12, like I said, for 12, 12 rounds, 36 minutes, I got to be great. I got to stay locked in. I got to be focused. I got to weather that storm that he's going to bring and then bring my storm. You know what I'm saying? And going there and just, you know, I, like I said, this this fight is not physical with this fight. It's all mental. You know what I'm saying? It's all IQ. It's all mental. It's all, you know, learning how to break him down, you know, understanding, you know, he's got to be in four times, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, people practice cold already. You know what I'm saying? He breathes the same air I breathe. He bleeds the same way I bleed. He's a human. You know what I'm saying? He's not a fucking robot. He's not coming from another space and doing anything different. It's all about the mentality, about the IQ, and about how I'm going in there fighting on September 14th. When you look at, as you said, that you know he's lost a few times. Even the ones that didn't get it, Arislandi Lara had a great fight against him. Jaime Munguia started out good and then faded. What do fighters do wrong against Canelo? Do you feel like they get hit and suddenly check out? What do they do wrong that you're going to do right? One thing I know for sure, and Andre Ward told me this, he said a lot of fighters at this at this level, when they fight, when they're getting ready to fight a banger fight, they overtrain mm -hmm. over, over fear. You know what I'm saying? They they if you look at Mungia, Mungia looked tired like after the third round. He looked already like tired, like he didn't have that explosion. You know what I'm saying? And he started bending down. He started, you know. Canelo's a guy that's 5'8", five, 5'7". Five, this guy's six feet, and you crouching now. You, you're giving up four or five inches of your height. You know, Mungia would have stood his distance and used his jab and keep them from the outside and throw all his combinations the way he was throwing. He would have beat him. You know, what, what fucked him up was him allowing Canelo to come close and hit the body and throw those combinations that he throws, mixing it up, you know. Um, and I feel like Mungia got tired. I feel like his, I feel like his, he has great conditioning, you know, and he, he finished the whole 12 round. But as for Asimo Gia, way more explosive in his other fights, even when he fought Sergey, you know, him getting hurt, coming back and dropping Sergey in the toilet, he was explosive. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And that that could come from, like what Andre Ward told me, fear, overtraining over fear. You know what I'm saying? Like overtraining from fear, you know, fear of anything, you know, not fear of an opponent, but just fear in general, just getting tired. You know, people want to run, you know, fighters want to run 10 miles and spar 20 rounds, you know? So... Yeah, Edgar, uh, Brad Goodman, the matchmaker over at, at Top Rank, he went out on a statement and said, listen, you know, people who are overlooking Edgar, you, you can't. You know, this this guy, now that he's back with Mark Foray, he, he's seen something different. I tend to agree, and I've been saying that. You know, what what new elements, what new wrinkles are you going to be bringing into the ring on fight night? Because Paulie said, listen, you got to be that guy that you've shown to be for 12 rounds, but I think you got to be something else. I think you got to be the, the, the next evolution of Edgar Berlanga. What is the difference that we're going to see come – uh, September 14th. Greatness. Um, I'm not going to say it because I know this is going to go all over like I told the other guy. You know, you're going to see greatness September 14th, man. You know, I'm telling you. Like, everything. And 
like I said before, everybody right now is against me. It's cool, you know what I'm saying? And I'm fighting a legend, so and I haven't fought nobody at his caliber yet. So I, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have people, I'm gonna have the doubters, man. I'm gonna have people, you know, saying this, saying that, looking at my fights. But I'm telling you, September 14th, y'all gonna see some something different. You're gonna see greatness, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm special that night for sure, a thousand Edgar, percent. Edgar, I'll, I'll uh. I'll, I'll make a couple of statements more so than a question. I think what Andre Ward, when he gave you that great advice, I think people overtrain in these moments because the moment becomes bigger than them. I don't so much just fear as it, they just think it's such a big moment that they're overhyped and they sort of let it capture them and they want to win so badly that they end up overtraining. And so that, that's that that's that discipline that you need a good team and you need within that calm within yourself. I'm going to tell you something. So I said with fear, it's not that's why I said if you heard me. I said not fear yeah. of the opponent. Yeah, fear of, of the moment. It's, I saw it's, I heard you. It's, 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 it's oh, not wanting man. to fail, Edgar. It's yeah, not exactly. wanting to that's, fail. That's fear and, of failure. Uh, sometimes fighters tend to, to forget. Like right now I'm in a mind. I could I could be running fucking 20, 30 miles and uh, mm -hmm. but is that gonna fit me? No, man. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Of course. But I'll tell you, I'll tell, I'll give you this. I remember being in the fighter meeting with Anthony Joshua against Vladimir Klitschko. And I was in the man fighter meeting with Anthony Joshua. And he said something that really struck me. He said, you know, this is the biggest fight of your career, yada, 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 the Wem Wembley Stadium, all that stuff. He goes, how do you, you know, get past the same questions? How do you get past all this big hype, this big moment you haven't been in before? And he had something that really stuck out to me. He said something that really stuck out to me. I feel like all fighters should know this in, in, in these big fights. He said, it's not about the press clippings. It's not about, it's me and another man. He goes, I don't look at it like Vladimir Klitschko, the ex on the future champion, the ex this, or the guy, the guy everybody's saying is this guy. It's me and it's another man. And I said, if, it, if I look at it as me and another man, I don't look at it as accolades. I don't look at anything. It's me and another man in the ring. That's it. Right. That's so that, that's, that's it. I don't, I, I don't, you know, everybody's different, right? Like me and Triple G, me and this guy, me and this guy, cool. It's different. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, as, you know, I know you hear me saying he's a legend, but I'm not looking at him like, oh my God, he's Canelo. No, he's a regular human being, bro. He's right. He bleeds the way I bleed, breathe the way I breathe. He's gotten beaten before. You know what I'm saying? He's he's the guy that's gonna bring greatness out of me, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm not, and I'm like I said before, I got my back against the wall on everybody, whatever, whatever the whole world. You know what I'm saying? I probably got like. Half the people are going for me, and then half the people are like, this, this dude's going to get knocked the fuck out, you know? But it's cool, you know? I got to go in there, and I got to show greatness that night, man. Like, obviously, I got this opportunity for a reason. Just like Deion Sanders, the legend, told me last week, you got this opportunity for a reason, champ. God gave you this opportunity for a reason. There's a reason why you got this opportunity, you know? So don't get it messed up. Don't let these people trick you out of your spot, champ. You know what I'm saying? You got this opportunity for a reason, and this is the perfect time, man. You know, so right there is, is is motivation. You know what I'm saying? Like I just gotta go in there, and I gotta do my best. You know, and and I gotta perform at the best of my ability. If he beats me, like well, Andre, if a guy beats me, I talk to him. You know what I'm saying? Take off to him. You beat me at my best, man. You know, but I feel like, man, me at my best, bro. Like when I'm at on, when I'm on, nobody's fucking with me. Nobody's fucking with me. Nobody. You know. And the world haven't seen Edgar Belanga in September 14th. They're going to see me. Are you, on, to... are, you, are you on Twitter? Are you on Twitter? Are you on? You said when you're on. Are you on, Edgar? No, I'm going to be on. Holding camp. Sure. <laughs> it, I can't tuck my tail that night. The whole world's going to be watching, bro. You crazy. I can't go in there and put my tail up my ass and say, oh, no, I'm going to let this guy pound me out. I'm going to let him hit me on my arms. I'm going to let him break my arms down the half of the fight. So it could be easy for him to come in. I'm gonna let him hit my body, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, nah, fuck that, bro. We gotta go on there, you know what I'm saying, and, and and go out there, you know, with my shield, bro. And he gonna go with his shield. He gonna go with his clip. I'm gonna go with my clip, you know. And we gotta, gotta, we, we gotta go to war, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like I say, he's human, man. He's human. He's human. And I walk with God, and I got a lot of people that's that's gonna that's that's with me that night. You know what I'm saying? And I know the game needs somebody they tired of him. You know what I'm saying? They tired of him with his little, you know, they say like he does his little childish ways where he's picking and choosing his opponents and stuff. You know, I'm a guy that, you know, 
that obviously if the money's right, we fighting everybody and everybody. You know what I'm saying? That's what boxing needs. You know, so and they they want a new face. You know what I'm saying? He's been he's been out, he's been he's been a face already for 168 for a while already. You know, he already got, you know, hairs falling out. You know, he's a, he's already at that. He did what he had to do in the sport of boxing. You know what I'm saying? They want that young blood to come in and, and you know, and spice up the sport again. So, you know, that's why I'm here, man. You know, I'm Puerto Rican from New York. I'm young. I'm strong. You know, and I just got to go out there and prove, you know, that I can hang with those guys. You know what I'm saying? And I, and I could beat those type of guys. Man, Edgar Berlanga is ready to go. He is focused. We need this fight to happen like in the next two hours. I mean, that's how hyped it is for this one there. We look at the tail of the tape. Berlanga, I think the biggest number, two numbers stand out for me. The age, the fact that he's six years younger and he's six foot one compared to Saul Canelo Alvarez, who's just under, or five, seven and a half. So we'll see if that can work in Berlanga's favor. The chosen one in his favor in that fight between Canelo or against with him and Canelo Alvarez. All right, let's bring in the champions here to talk about what Edgar Berlanga said and give you a little bit of a taste of what to expect possibly from that fight. In studio, right outside me, right here to my right, is Chris Algieri joining us here in studio. And then on Zoom, we have Showtime Sean Porter and Paulie Malignaggi here on Big Fight Breakdown. Woo! Gentlemen, all right, let's get into it because, man, just hearing Edgar Berlanga talk was like, man, we need to get this fight moving soon. We need to get this Can fight first? very quickly. Yeah, go ahead, Sean. Get your reaction. You first. There's a lot of fighters that need to stay off of social media. I believe that two things should happen when a fight gets announced, especially a big fight. Judges and referees, you should not be looking at social media to see what people are saying about the fight. You should not be looking at YouTube, looking at these guys that you're about to get in the ring and ref or be around the ring judging. And fighters should not be on social media. They should not be on YouTube listening to interviews and what people think and pe what people say about this fight, what they who they think is going to win, so on and so forth. It seems to me like that's all Edgar Berlanga has done throughout the, this whole process of this fight being announced all the way up until right there where he just did the, uh, did the interview. And whether it's him looking at it daily or people just bringing it to him in general, a lot of the things that he said seem to me like he's answering questions that he been, haven't even been asked to, to him. He's talking about Canelo just being human, just like him. Okay, you're stating the obvious. We already know that. But are you trying to convince yourself that he's just human? Because you've said this now three or four different times. Is this now the, the, the company line? He's only human, just like me. Is this now what you guys are projecting to everybody to give them the sense that you may win, be able to win this fight? It's a fight. Every fighter has a puncher's chance. Every fighter has the ability to create a game plan that will beat the other the other fighter. Everyone has attributes that could beat the other guy. The bottom line is we don't see that in Edgar Berlanga. We're sorry that we don't see that in him, but it's not his job to do interviews come trying to convince us that he's going to win the fight. The thing he needs to do is say, train very hard. I'm excited about the opportunity. I'm going to get in the ring with this legend, and I'm going to beat him. And when people say, well, how are you going to beat him? Guess what? None of us believe that you can do it, so don't even try to convince us that you can do it. What you need to do is say, you're going to have to see on fight night. I know you don't believe in me, but watch. I got something. Now, if we talk about game plan, what can you do? What are you going to do? All these other things. Go ahead. Tell us. If, if Canelo is who he is, he won't be able to stop it anyway. So tell us what you can do to beat us, beat him. But when you don't tell us what those X's and O's are, when you can't articulate what it is that you have inside of you to beat him, you ain't did nothing but make make me believe what I already know, that you can't beat Canelo Alvarez. So that uh, interview, yeah, it may get people hyped and all those sorts of things, but he didn't say anything that that convinced me that um, he, he, he has what it takes to beat Canelo Alvarez. Yes. Talk, talking about the psychological part of it there. Paulie, what do you make of Sean's comments and then what 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 Berlanga said in that interview? Yeah, Tim, I think you made a lot of great points here. You know, uh, seems like he has sort of take, put this chip on his shoulder about trying to prove everybody wrong. And I don't necessarily mind that you want to prove everybody wrong. Uh, but when you're talking the way he is, well, he's just human. He's just this. He's just that. It means you've accepted the fact that you know, he's he everybody acknowledges that he's better than you. 
and you have to convince yourself and everybody else that he's not better than you and that he's he's human. But I, I can't. For example, I you know the, the 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 best contender in this weight class is, is David Benavides, right? I can't see David Benavides going into press conferences saying, "Well, he's only human, so I can take him on." Because, you know, personally, I think Benavides runs the guy over like a train. And I and I think Benavides would acknowledge that he would probably run him over like a train, you know, as opposed to I'm not telling you Edgar Belanga has to say I'll run this guy over like a train. But when you're sitting there telling me he's only human, that means you're try- you like 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 Sean, like champ, like you said, you know, he's trying to convince us that he's like me. He's no he's not this big monster. But why? Who's making him this big monster? Yeah, the media talks a lot about him, but nobody's making him this big monster. As a matter of fact, the media all criticizes him for not fighting Benavides. So he's obviously not this big monster. He's just very popular. You are making him this big monster by saying, by continuing to say the quote, uh, that, that champ, you made a good, good quote, the company line. Oh, he's only human. He's only human. It, do you believe he's only human? Because either way, <laughs> you got, you're getting into fight week now. You're supposed to feel like you're going to beat this guy. So, he should be even less than human to you. He should be forward in front of you. You know, he should be the guy that, you know, you want to take out and 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 improve your career and improve your status and do all the things that you dreamed of when you were a kid going to bed at night, you know? And, and who knows, Edgar still may be able to do this. But what I'm saying is it's tough, obviously. Uh, Champ, you're right. Nobody really believes it. But at the same time, it's hard to say what I told – it's hard to believe what I told him uh, in that interview when I said – you got a uh, Anthony Joshua. I talked about that. He felt like it was him and another man. You can't really look at it as you and another man if you feel like this guy is his boogeyman and you have to convince everybody, hey, he's not the boogeyman you guys say. Well, mm. just look at it like you and another man. You know, like, like I thought, I, I thought that was when Anthony Joshua said that in the fighting meeting, it always stuck out to me because that means a referee doesn't count. That means the media articles don't, don't count. You don't need to read them. Like you, yeah, you said, champ, you can stay off YouTube. Doesn't matter. And no, you, they ring the bell and it's you and another man. That's it. He has no reputation. He's he's a blank surface in front of you. If you can take that with you in the ring. There's less pressure on you. Now you can just be who you are. But if you start to take the press clippings in there and, and what the media said and and every and all the and, and all the negativity, now it's hard to just be you and another man. Now it's you and another man. And this man is all this big reputation behind him. You're feeling a little tightness, especially that this is your first big fight. Again, we're we're talking semantics here. You know, maybe Edgar shows up and he's really calm. Maybe Edgar needs this to motivate himself. In some ways, sometimes you do, but in the proper perspective. does Is he doing this in the proper perspective or is he overthinking this because this is his first big fight and it is a big fight that a lot of guys don't even get in their careers. Chris, I see you were shaking in the chair there. You know you got something to say, I know for sure. <laughs> uh, you guys got both got to talk. Somebody's got to play devil's advocate, right? Well, that's going to be me, okay? So, listen. Yeah, he's saying all these things, but... Delusion is a powerful weapon, and you don't know until you know. And there's two ways to kind of handle these situations when it's your first time. There's the Muhammad Ali way. I was the greatest even before I knew I was, right? He's got that ultimate confidence in himself and his ability. I can beat any, I can whip any man. There's that guy. Then there's the imposter syndrome. And imposter syndrome doesn't necessarily mean that you're an imposter. It just means you, you don't know yet. You don't know in your mind. You haven't figured it out yet. You haven't gotten to that point yet. And that's where the delusion comes in as a tool. You've got this tactic. Maybe Berlanga is elevating this guy and putting him on this pedestal, and he has, to compl- he has to tell himself over and over and over again, my mantra is, he is human. He bleeds mm. just like me. Movie quote, because we always do movie quotes. Predator, if it can bleed, <laughs> we can kill, kill it. it yeah. <laughs> so if he has this mantra, yeah, maybe he's not ready to fight him today. But he's not fighting him today. If he steps in the ring on fight night, and that mantra of him being human, he can bleed, I can kill him, I'm, I'm going to be that guy when it's time. If that delusion gets him to the place where maybe he does it, then you create a monster. Mm, because okay. that's the thing about imposter syndrome. Again, imposter syndrome is when you feel like you don't belong. And that's when you get the negative self-talk in your mind that goes, man, you don't belong here. Man, you, don't, you, you, you never fought anybody like this. Man, you, don't, you didn't deserve this shot. Man, they're, they're talking about this on social media, like you said, champ. I, all this talk, they're all saying, maybe they're right. But what you tell yourself, how you st- stop that negative self-talk, that's your weapon. That's your tool. And sometimes that can be what looks like from the outside delusional. Mm. Crazy man, it's crazy until he's right. Right. Right? So <laughs> Berlang is looking to put himself in the right position by talking himself into it. So I appreciate it. I mean, yeah, he's saying all these things, and we can analyze this and cut this thing from pieces to pieces and rip it apart, whatever it is. We're not going to know until fight night. And neither is Edgar.
So that's uh, that's the way I kind of look at it. Because I got I got to push back on you guys. I can't agree all the time because then we're not going to show. <laughs> we, may, yeah. we may know in the press conference next week. Because again, now yeah. you've got to keep this energy in the press conference next week. You can't not have this energy in the press conference next week. Now that you've set the drawn this line in the sand, so to speak. He's six foot one compared to five foot seven and a half there in favor of Berlanga. So does that height advantage, kind of the physical fact that he's taller, maybe give him that extra psychological boost he needs to? to Overcome Canelo. I remember George Foreman, HBO. Uh, he was a fantastic commentator. One of the one of the I, I one of my favorite fighters who commentated as well. I thought he was every fight he had these beautiful nuggets that he would say that came from out of left field that you never really think about. When he says it though, you're just like, man, that makes so much sense. And he always talked about Oscar De La Hoya's shoulders. And he said, you got to look across that ring and look at that guy's shoulders. You got to you got to you got to have that imposing thing in front of you. And listen, I mean, it's the thing. I mean, Canelo's been in with a bunch of big guys, of course, but. But Berlanga is looking down at his opponent. Man, I got four and a half inches on you, dude. I'm yeah. six years younger than you. I, I can punch. You know, he, he believes he can punch. I can punch. So he's got that. He's got that, 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 that position where I'm looking down at you. Man, this guy's small. I remember, I remember fighting Manny Pacquiao. I'm like, this guy's this guy's small. And then in the weigh-in, I got the weigh-in. I was like, oh, he's not that small. My favorite part about George Foreman was Larry Merchant disagreeing with him. And then Larry Merchant not even knowing what he's disagreeing with. He was just disagreeing. Just disagreeing. <laughs> he, he, was doing, was he was doing my devil's was, advocate George just was, to do it. George was smart in that it went over a lot of people's heads if you don't really understand yeah. the, the little nuggets that he was really bringing out there. you know. And Larry definitely went over his head almost every time. But, but that's what made Larry good TV. It was funny. Um... But as far as being taller, I want to make a point, too. It didn't work for Calvin Smith, guys. I mean, there's guys – Canelo is a shorter guy in this weight class. Yeah. Being tall and being the more physically imposing guy isn't what's going to beat Canelo Alvarez. You, you, what you do, your self-belief and then translating it to physical work, uh, intelligent work, uh, activity even, is, is what's going to beat Canelo Alvarez. So the, the whole physically imposing side, I mean, Calvin Smith took a beating and, and he was physically imposing in that, in that fight. Yeah, Sean, what do you make of the size advantage for Berlanga and how it might help him psychologically kind of overcome overcome the, the, the aura of Canelo in that fight? A lot of people have ripped uh Berlanga over the years, even for the for the for the for the things that he for the sake of words can't do in the ring. I know for myself it was always like, man, I'm waiting to see you set things up in the fight. I'm waiting to see you use a good jab to set up the big right hand. And, you know, he is someone that I have not been able to see or I, I haven't seen be able to put the ABCs to boxing together, build on things yeah, to yeah. create the big moments that he needs. When you're a big guy and you're facing a small guy, especially a small guy who's used to facing the big guys, a lot of big guys aren't used to facing guys th that much shorter or smaller than them. So they have to make the adjustments. The adjustments are going to have to come from Edgar Belenga more than they're going to have to come from Canelo Alvarez. So when I say that, number one, if I haven't seen you set things up in the past against guys your height, against guys your size, then I really can't believe that you know how to set things up against someone who's so much shorter than you in stature and things of that nature. So you know, again, to keep it simple, when we're talking about him yeah. being the taller, bigger guy, it starts with the jab. I haven't seen him use a good, effective, strong, fast jab in ever of his career, you know. So to me, that's where it starts. And, um, you know, if we haven't seen him doing it in the past, we can't imagine that he's just going to be able to do it on fight night sure. against mm -hmm. Canelo Alvarez. Sure, but I, I, I'm going to add to what to that point. This is a, this is a great point. I feel like Edgar has been a guy who has – does this well, does this well. There's dots on the on the on the table, so to speak, that he does well, but he doesn't connect them. They don't connect. He he'll he'll show a good jab at times. I think in the last couple of fights he's shown a good jab, but it's not a versatile jab. It's just a hard jab every single time. It's hard to follow with a good right hand when you're throwing a hard jab every single time. When you're gonna follow with a sharp one, two, you gotta take a little bit off that jab. But you gotta take a little enough off that jab to where you hide the right hand, but you can't take too much off that jab <laughs> to where to where now it looks obvious that you're trying to hide the right hand. So there's a balance there. And like you said, that's the the the, the, the deceptiveness of 
being able to add those pieces in there. So he's got all the he's got the pieces. Connecting them is the difficult part, and that's where you find out if you're world class or not. Because those pieces that you have, they work against a little the lesser opposition. But at world class level, you can take those pieces into the ring. But if you cannot connect them together and connect them both offensively, setting them up, and then track back to connecting them defensively after you've done punching, it doesn't work at world class level. And that's what we're about to find out without Edgar Belanga next week. And Pauly, that's that is my. That is why I love talking boxing. We have the understanding of how we connect things and people don't understand it. Mm. They think it's just getting the ring. It's ones, it's twos, it's threes, it's fours and don't understand how we have to add speed here, take away power there, add power there, small steps over, all these other small little intricate details that make it a masterpiece masterpiece at the end of the night. So I want to say thank you, sir, for, for doing that right now, man. That was well, beautiful. Well, champ, you set that up perfectly, man. You set it up. That's, <laughs> why, that's why we're working together here, man. Yeah. You know? But this is also what makes our job so difficult because it is such a nuanced sport, and our fan base needs to be intelligent. They need to understand what they're watching. Boxing, and I, I had this conversation in the gym a couple of days ago, actually. We were talking about the difference between MMA and boxing, and a lot of times I think there's a, such a big fan base of MMA fans because a lot of MMA fans, especially in the beginning, watch those guys fight and be like, I could do that. Looks like a street fight. <laughs> Nobody no. watched a boxing match and goes, I can do that. Yeah. Boxing is way, way more complicated. It's such a nuanced sport. So to your, both your points, um, my number one concern, now I'm switching completely up, my number one concern <laughs> for Edgar Berlanga going into this fight, you guys talked about, made excellent points about him not building on things. My number one concern for Edgar Berlanga in this fight is actually Canelo's last fight when he fought Jaime Munguia. Jaime looked great for three rounds. And I expect Ber Berlanga's best shot to be in the first three rounds. If he can't do anything big, what do his chances really look like? Because Canelo, in those first three rounds of Mugia, I'm watching that fight, I'm like, man, Mugia's looking really good. He's showing things I've never seen before. He's putting things together. And then Canelo just say nice and calm, boom, boom, boom. Do you, take, champ, do you take stock into what Edgar said about that? That maybe Mungia overtrained, and then he was out. He was out. Mm. He was just came out gunning because he was just so hyped, and he'd been hyped in camp. And then all of a sudden, he got flat after a few rounds. Absolutely, but I think a lot of that also had to do with this. It was it was the mental fatigue the that was developed from dealing yeah. with a guy who's standing in front of you, not doing much, and you yeah. can't you can't hurt and him. That, you can't touch and that's him. Boom, the boom, that's that where you sucks the life as, out of you. That's where you got to see him as another man and not as Canelo, the big monster star. Because yeah. that mental pressure multiplies in your mind if you don't see him as just another man like you. You know what I mean? You can tell us, so he's a man, he bleeds, he's another man. Like but by when you say that, that means you're trying to convince yourself he's not. It should already be second nature to you. If you're not reading the press clippings, if you're not reading, you're not listening to what the media is saying, then in eight weeks in camp, believe me, he's just going to be a man to you. But if you're reading in, 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 in press Kipling's in camp and you're and you're listening to what the media is saying in camp, by the time you get to the fight, yeah, you're going to be trying to convince the hell out of yourself that he's just a man because all you've been hearing about is Canelo being the destroyer. So, you know, that's a, a, another going back to another great point Sean made, champ. You know, you shouldn't be reading these clippings, man. It's not easy. I remember in camp, I tried, I tried <laughs> to stay away from them at times. You get bored in camp, man, because you have to get a lot of training in and a lot of rest in between the training. So there's a lot of dead time when you have to rest. And Can during Canelo's that rest a different, time, you pick up your phone. Canelo's a different guy, though. I don't, I don't care if you're on social media or not. You've been watching – you've been a fan of this guy. berlango has been a fan of this guy. He's been watching this man for, for a decade and a half. So I, you're looking at the press couplings now. Well, you yeah, you definitely off. shouldn't be doing that. you got to turn off for two you got to be able to turn that off. But and that, when you made that great point about uh, Benavidez, Benavidez is not going to go in there and say, this guy's a man like me. He, he's going to go in there and I'm going to whoop this man's ass. That's, that's, right. that's the mindset I'm going to have. And Berlanga doesn't necessarily have that. He do, does seem like he has that little bit of a younger guy coming up. Um, but, I, again, I, I think R. Leon is going to be very interesting. And, and if that mindset doesn't bleed over into the fight, really, it can't. Otherwise, Edgar's not going to have a battle to, to get, get, that, get through this. So, is it a situation here? Well, I want, Sean said something that I thought it was really cool. Is the key to Berlanga's victory here, Chris, the jab? Is it really going to come down to that? Or, or, or that's where it starts, I should say. Well, I mean, Berlanga said that himself. He okay. said it's the jab. That's something. But, like, how, how much time have they put to using a jab for 12 rounds? 12 rounds is a long time. Mm. 12 rounds are a long time. we got two other guys here who have used a jab for 12 rounds before. That's a long time to use a jab, man. And if you haven't done that in a fight, you're not figuring that on, on, on the biggest stage. Right. So, I, and yeah, he, he, can hide, he can hide his power for sure. Mm. But if he's going to use that jab all night long, it's going to be, it's going to be really okay. difficult to see him make that, make that uh, adjustment. adjustment. And, Chan, that's a, I mean, that's a, a, another 
great point now you're making here with that jab. Let me add to that uh, great point. It's using your jab for 12 rounds. In order to use it for 12 rounds effectively, you've got to be able to vary it because if you don't vary it, then in 12 rounds, you're going to start seeing right hands come over the top of it or, or slip and rip left hooks from Canelo off of that jab. So it's not just using the jab for 12 rounds means you ultimately know how to vary because at world-class level, if you're using the jab for 12 rounds and it's the same jab, you're going to start paying for using that jab because at world-class level, they get your timing down. So the variation of your jab is world what class makes level, your jab dominate world-class world level, level. They get your and timing down in one round. Has to do. Hmm? <laughs> world-class level, they get your timing down in one round. You can't throw the same jab yeah, twice. I mean, sometimes they yeah. do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, all right. So before we wrap it up, final thoughts, Sean. We'll start with you here. Uh, what's your final thoughts about the Berlanga interview and then obviously going into that fight against Canelo? Well, I think uh, Berlanga needs to use his jab. Remember what, uh, what uh, I'm, I'm, I'm spacing on the young man's name who who just beat Canelo uh, last Bebo. year. Um, Bebo. Bebo. Excuse me. Yes. Dimitri Bebo. Um, Dimitri, excuse me. Um, take a page from that book. Stay on the outside. Use your jab. Use your strength. Make him feel it. Again, have confidence in yourself. If you got that confidence in yourself, be confident that you can mimic what another fighter, another really good fighter did. Make that fight look a little bit like that and then find ways to take control. Um, do I think Berlinga has the ability to do that? I hope so, but no, I don't think so. Um, I think this fight ends and uh, nine rounds or less. All right, Paulie, what are your final thoughts here about the Berlinga interview and then obviously heading into that fight? Yeah, I'm, I'm on the same page with Sean in, in, in that I hope so, too. I, I'm tired of seeing the Canelo retirement tour with all four world title belts. So I, I, I don't mind the Canelo retirement tour, but if somebody would do me a favor and beat him so that the world title belts can be free and he can continue his retirement tour without the belts, that would be the biggest thing for me. So I'd love to see – I'd love nothing more than to see Belanga actually be able to pull this off. But if you're going to do it off the jab like we're talking about here, it's, it's – the, bringing up Bevo, champ, you just made another great point because Bevo – Understanding how to come control with the jab means you know how to step in and step out using the jab, you know, and, and I'm not sure that Berlanga knows how to go backwards using the jab. He's always been that kind of knockout guy. He had those that string of first round knockouts in a row. But I don't even know if he worked on that kind of boxing to where you're filling the gap, you're stepping in hard with hard jabs, and then you're, you're just kind of leaving a space so your opponent can step in and you catch him with more jabs and you sort of control the range in that way, frustrating him and then slowing the pace down with that. That's a versatile ass jab, bro. And Bevo had that, you know. So it, it, does Berlanga have that? We don't know because I don't. I'm not sure we've seen Berlanga understand how to fight fight going backwards and forwards. You're gonna need both of those to uh, be successful in this fight. Let's see how he does. Great points, guys. Talking about the jabs. Who are the four fighters who gave Canelo the most trouble? Right. Number one was Arizona Lee Lara. Southpaw got a good jab. Got to deal with. Uh, well, number one is Floyd Mayweather, obviously. Yeah. Floyd Mayweather, fantastic jab. Yeah, of course. Triple G, fantastic jab. A very underrated jab. One of the highest jab connect rates of any middleweight Matter of fact, in history. So fantastic jab. That they robbed, so underrated that they robbed him in the rematch <laughs> when he had a better jab. Exactly. When he yeah. had the best exactly. jab all three and, fights. Then, and then lastly is Bivol, another great jabber, another guy who changes distance, changes the cadence throughout. Um, you know, so th those are the guys that have given him the most trouble. For me, I I'm not going to worry about technique, if, what Edgar needs to do. I just want, I want him to be the guy that he's saying he is that – you know, he, he, he can bleed like me. Uh, he's not better than me. He's a human. You know, I, I'm going to be great. And I, when times get tough, I hope he sticks with that and doesn't, and doesn't succumb to the social media posts, to what people are saying that he's, was, is going to happen, to what guys like us might be saying. So I, I hope he sticks out there and, 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 and does what he's been saying and lives up to all this, this hype, which has been fun, that he's built this fight up to be. Yeah, it's going to be a fascinating event for sure. September 14th, Canelo Alvarez versus Edgar Berlanga. All right, Chris... Pauly and Sean, thank you very much. Always great stuff here on Pro Box TV. Don't forget to scan the QR code, download the app where apps are available, and for because on the app you get the full box uh, Pro Box TV experience, including Wednesday night fights and a few days after the next Wednesday night fights, which is September 11th. Got that Canelo Berlanga fight September 14th, and after that fight, immediately afterwards, big fight breakdown live with your comments, your chats, your super chats here on Pro Box TV, your boxing channel. All right, I'm George DiMatteis. Thank you for watching Big Fight Breakdown. He's the pride of Guadalajara, the Mexican maestro, the unified super middleweight champion of the world, Canelo Alvarez. His challenger, undefeated knockout artist and pride of Puerto Rico, Edgar Berlanga. It's prime time. Canelo 
versus Berlanga, plus Lara versus Garcia. Saturday, September 14th, live on PBC Pay-Per-View on Prime Video. For more Pro Box TV, scan the QR code on the screen or go to the App Store and Google Play. Pro Box TV, your boxing channel.